Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. So thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, continuing the topic of pretty PCBs and beautiful electronics, I'm going to share with you today why art is the missing piece of STEM education. First of all, let me introduce myself. I work as an embedded engineer and a product manager. I am also a STEAM educator. I've been teaching robotics to kids for a few years. And I am also an artist. Um, so how did I start making open source hardware? Uh, in high school, I was always passionate about computer science, uh, but I also really liked art and building physical things. So I didn't really know what to pursue as a career, but I figured out electronics would be the most fun thing you could use computer science for. Um, however, in my first year of college, I was quite disappointed by the lack of practical things we were learning. So I reached out to the locker makerspace we have in Bucharest. And I joined some hardware prototyping workshops. And that's about the same time when I learned about these awesome um, open source home communities. And I also discovered that people are actually building beautiful electronics. So I was not aware of that until then. And that's when I decided I need to build my own projects like that. So why should we add art to STEAM? Well, first of all, Art can be a tool, great tool for increasing engagement in STEM. Um, because tech can be really tough to approach for many of us, and uh, many give up before even trying because they believe they're not good enough. So I think using art can make it more engaging and fun. And this is especially important for um, underrepresented categories in STEM. Second of all, it promotes innovation. And it's no wonder why the greatest engineers um, were also artists. And it can also be a great tool for communicating complex ideas, making science easier to understand. And to convince you of all of these arguments, I'm going to show you how I use um, beautiful electronics to teach myself um, science and technology. This is the first project I've ever built. It's a um, cute alpaca with a rainbow color changing tail. And yeah, it works something like this. It just, it just has an LED and um, cycles through many colors. And my favorite part of building it is that nothing really gets wasted because I use the leftover pins from the LED to make some sewing hooks so you can attach it onto clothes and wear it like this. Later on, I decided my alpaca needed an upgrade, so I added the microcontroller so I could have my alpaca development world. And it also has some glowing cheeks um, because I use some pink reverse mounted LEDs for that. I mentioned earlier that I used to teach um, electronics to kids, and one of the things we taught them was how to solder. And this is a soldering kit we've used for that. It's a dual tip circuit uh, which lights up in the dark. And how many of you would you like to take would like to take home the left PCB, for example? Raise your hand if you like that one. Okay, so a few of you. But how about the right one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what the kids thought. Um, because the circuit is exactly the same one. Uh, but at some point, we redesigned it because the kids weren't that enthusiastic about the first one. But when we changed it to the cool robot, they all wanted to take it home and show it to their parents and friends. And because we got such good feedback for that, we made another iteration of the project. Uh, which required no soldering, so the kids could be able to assemble it them by themselves at home without um, the supervision of an adult. And uh, if they made a mistake, like placing the LED uh, in the wrong position, they can just take it out and place it the correct way. So it was much easier to uh, assemble like that. And to make the learning journey even more interesting for the kids, uh, we designed some worksheets for this kit, and they had all the instruction necessary written there. 
And they also had another worksheet with all the um, explanation of what each component is doing in the circuit, circuit and what is its purpose. Now, this one is uh, my favorite project that I designed, I think. It's a mini electronic violin because I love violins, but I can't really play them because music is not my thing at all. <laughs> But electronics is, so the only way for me to be able to play a violin was to design one and program it myself. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is the circuit. Uh, it has a buzzer for playing some digital tunes and a tiny push button for switching between some predefined songs. And I also added some real strings made of some really thin wires and you are able to play the violin with a tiny copper fiddle, <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. So I can play the tiny violin in the office at work when there's some drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this LED tiara is a circuit sculpture, and it was inspired by the Neo Pixel tiara by Becky Stern, which I love. And this is my wonderful friend wearing it. But I realized it has a little flaw. Um, everybody loved the tiara at work and they all tried it on. But the guy, guys complain that it kind of shocks you when you wear it <laughs> because it isn't insulated. <laughs> all the wires are exposed and especially if you're powering it from a LiPo battery, which can provide lots of um, power. It can, it can shock you, but yeah. <laughs> so usability, test it on everyone. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> and continuing with wearables, um, this is a twinkly star wearable that I initially designed for um, a circuit, um, no, for a PCB design contest. And it has an um, 80 tiny microcontroller and the coin cell battery, but it's, also working great as a wearable. Uh, now, this is a project that um, came up as a solution for a problem that they have. Because I have to often take pictures of the projects I make. And as you could see, most of them are quite tiny. So I needed a portable uh, and the color adjustable studio light to shine some color on my PCBs and to create pictures like this one, for example. And it consists of two PCBs sandwiched together, a NeoPixel matrix uh, with a rotary encoder, which you can use to adjust the intensity of each color, so we, uh, of RGB. And uh, it also has a battery shield, so it's portable and doesn't require a wire to be powered. And it also has this acrylic panel in order to diffuse the light. And even though I initially meant to use this just as a tool for photography, it ended up being great as a mood light that you can just keep on your desk because it's quite pretty for that. Have you, has anyone here heard of GOSH? Do you know about the GOSH committee? Oh, quite a lot, great. So. GOSH stands for Gathering of Open Science Hardware. And this is the first event, open science event, that I participated in person. It was last year. And um, I even got to facilitate an art and science um, unconference session. And um, I thought how I, I taught people how to design PCBs, but we didn't have any laptops. So I had to improvise a bit and we just used some colorful post-it notes. And each post-it um, represented a layer of a PCB. So for example, the green is the solder mask and the silk screen is the black. And I asked people to design uh, using paper what kind of PCB they would like to have, but it has had to be something pretty something they would like to wear after. And they created wonderful things like this. And I got really good feedback for it because uh, many people who haven't done any PCB design before were now interested in learning about electronics. So 
it made me realize that it is important to teach science in such an engaging way to get more people interested. Uh, yeah. Another cool thing about the GOSH event was that everything was Nyeke themed. Uh, Nyekes are these cute rodents and they are everywhere in Panama. And Ed, Andy loves them a lot. Andy is doing the bubble punk workshop. So you can ask him more about this. So I wanted to have an open source hardware contribution to remind me of that event. And I did this color changing uh, Nyeke. Art can also be used as a great tool for communicating complex ideas. And that's what I've been doing to, through Pika Comics, which is a comic that explains electronics in a fun visual way. So for example, here we have some parallel capacitor friends and some active components play, playing tennis with an electron <laughs> or a super capacitor and a floating gate transistor. And this is the project I'm working on right now, which was also inspired by the nature in Panama that I got to see during GOSH. And it's the most complex I've done so far because it has, a, it has four layers. And that's what it looks like. And I'm actually wearing it right now. And I really want to turn this one into an educational kit that you can program connect sensors to it, uh, run machine learning on it, whatever you want, because I feel like you would be mo more motivated to program something that you are um, proud to show off after. So I think PCBs and our electronics have to uh, look pretty in order to motivate people to engage with them. I am super grateful that all of this work has um, helped me gain some skills and I get to do open, uh, open source hardware at my job, as my job as well. For example, this hiking wearable or an illegal logging detection uh, device which uses um, machine learning to detect chainsaw sounds in the forest. And all of this work has had some good results I'm very grateful that I got to reach uh, out to so many people and um, inspire some to build their own projects because I got some good feedback for uh, some of the things that I built. And I have um, a piece of advice for you. First of all, if you're working on a, an open source hardware project right now, please document it and share it with the community and also certify it um, because that's also a good validation that your project is done. Second of all, create opportunities both for yourself and for others, because um, sharing your project with the community can give you really good feedback, uh, which helps you improve. And you can do that by attending events and maker communities like you are doing right now, for example. Third of all, um, now more than ever, we have access to cutting edge tech and it would be such a waste not to use it. So from edge machine learning to neuromorphic computing, try to use all of this uh, into your projects. Fourth of all, um, I think the coolest things get created when people mix their passions. So don't be afraid to mix your hobbies and if you're into electronics and music, do something amazing with that. And finally, don't forget to make things for fun because that's really important. And it's fine to just create for the sake of creating. You don't always have to have a greater purpose and your, or your projects don't have to be world changing. Thank you so much and don't forget to keep creating. And you can find me here.